and welcome to Capel Manor where we're putting four top-end compact bridge cameras through their paces. Now I'm here with the Nikon Coolpix PX7000 and the Samsung EX1. Well I've opted for the Canon G12 and the Panasonic LX5. Now if you're after a camera with lots of manual functions but in a compact chassis, one of these is going to be your options. But which is the best at bridging that gap between a compact point and shoot and a bulky digital SLR? If one of my cameras wins, well, dinner's going to be on Katie. But if one of my cameras wins, then dinner's on Ben. There isn't a lot that these cameras aren't able to do, but what we're going to focus on today is the all-important picture quality, video quality and general ease of use. But before we can do that, we've got to get out of this maze. Now all these cameras go through hundreds of tests in our labs, as you can see by the reams of data that I've got here. And there are reviews based on this information on our website for which members. But for this part of the test, we're going to take a few shots and look at a few key features like this one that are gonna help me get out of here. Yes. How did you beat me? I thought I'd be fine with this Samsung screen. But the Canon's got an articulated screen as well, Katie. Fine, the first one to you then. Let's get snapping. Canon G12 has a 10 megapixel sensor and it has a five times optical zoom, beginning at a wide 28 millimeters and extending to 140 millimeters. It weighs 425 grams and is able to shoot 720p HD video. It's got a 2.8 inch LCD on the rear that can be articulated and at its widest setting, the aperture can be set as large as 2.8. The Nikon Coolpix P7000 has 10 megapixels of resolution. It's got a massive 7.1 times optical zoom that starts from a wide angle of 28 millimeters and extends out to 200 millimeters. It weighs in at 391 grams and shoots 720p HD video. There's a three inch high resolution LCD screen and it's also got a viewfinder. The Panasonic LX5 also has a 10 megapixel sensor, but it's a little bit smaller than the sensors on the other models. It can also shoot 720p HD video and the lens at its widest setting offers a generous 24 millimeters. This comes at the expense of the lens's maximum tele setting, which is 90 millimeters, giving it a 3.8 times optical zoom range. With an f-stop of two, it's got one of the largest apertures of the cameras on test and it's remarkably light, weighing in at only 284 grams. It doesn't have a viewfinder, but it has a 460,000 dot resolution 3-inch LCD on the rear. Not to be left out, the Samsung EX1 also has a 10 megapixel sensor. It's only got a 3 times optical zoom, that's the smallest of the lot. The lens starts at a wide angle of 24mm, extending to just 72mm. With its 1.8 aperture, it has a nice bright lens. It weighs 365 grams and has a 3-inch adjustable AMOLED screen. Unlike the rest, the X1 only shoots standard definition video. Now I've really enjoyed using the Canon G12 today. In bright conditions, it takes exceptional shots that are difficult to rival for a compact camera. And that's either bright daylight or artificial light. In dimmer conditions, like here in the stable, it does struggle a little bit. Of course, you're not gonna get that digital SLR quality, but when you compare it to other compact cameras out there, it's still very good. The video quality is also very good. It can capture HD video at 720p resolution. The detail is sharp, the color reproduction is very good. However, you can't use the zoom while recording. I really like this Samsung. It's small, it's easy to hold, it fits in your pocket. 
Now the AMOLED screen shows up colours beautifully, but it does still show some reflections. So although you can tilt the screen out of the way a bit, you've got no viewfinder to rely on if you really can't see what you're shooting. It's got a 24mm wide angle lens so you can fit more people into a shot when you're shooting close up. It's also got really good depth of field. Video's not as great. It's the only one of these cameras that doesn't shoot in HD. Also, it doesn't shoot 16.9, so if you're viewing something on a widescreen TV, you'll get some black lines around the edges. But overall, I like it. So then we move on to the Panasonic LX5. Now, it doesn't offer quite the amount of manual control that you get on the Canon and the Nikon, but it still takes great photographs, particularly in bright conditions like a sunny day. This camera also has an f2.0 lens. That's a nice bright lens, which will allow more light through to the sensor. That will allow you to take superior shots in dimmer conditions, and that's where this camera excels. Video quality is also very good. However, if you use any of the controls while shooting video, the microphone does pick up that noise. This camera also lacks a viewfinder, and on a day like today, when you can't see what you're taking a photo of on the LCD, an optical viewfinder would have been a nice addition. This Nikon takes great shots no matter what the lighting condition, and it's also got the addition of a viewfinder which I used a lot. It's got the most powerful zoom of the lot, so if you're shooting things further away, you can get really close up. However, that comes at the expense of the wide angle. If you're shooting people closer to you, you might have to take a step back to fit everyone into the shot. Now, this camera goes very quickly from shot to shot in JPEG, which is what most people will use. But if you're shooting in the RAW format, the uncompressed format, it's actually rather slow to go from one to the next. Won't be a problem for most people. Now, the video on this is really good. Not as good in low light level conditions, but still a great camera. Did you enjoy that, Katie? I did, yeah. I got my obligatory photo of a bowl of fruit. Well, in testing cameras, you've got to photograph fruit, I guess. Yeah, and you've been photographing some animals? Yes, yes. There was a pig and I photographed a horse, although when I shot the horse, he was in a paddock a little far away. I couldn't get that close and I had the Panasonic with me at the time and the zoom isn't terrific on mm. the Panasonic. Yeah, well, you should have had my Nikon. That would have got you much closer. But it is a bulky camera, isn't it? It's the biggest of the bunch, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's bulky. It's not that heavy and... Dare I say, it looks a little bit cheap in terms of the controls, but it's a great camera. Once you get used and you realise just how handy they are to have all these extra dials. Yeah, you say it's not that heavy. I think the G12, well, it certainly feels the heaviest. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a chuffer. These two are nice and compact, but they're all put together really well, all solidly made, and they all take great photos, which is important. However, if you're a discerning photographer, then you're really going to want to know which one of these is the best so you can take the best possible photographs. So to find out which one of these models came out on top in our tests and to find out whether it's Katie or me who's buying dinner tonight, then go to our website at which.co.uk.